Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. On today's episode of the things you may have missed in Elden Ring, we're back with more Mount Gelmir. Today is going to consist of an absolute ton of caves with some incredible loot and we'll be unlocking the entrance for Volcano Manor ready for the next video. If you enjoy this kind of content please consider subscribing to the channel and if you decide you've enjoyed this video in particular please consider giving it a like. Now straight away whilst we're killing the giant worm face here I want to talk about the new weapons that I'm using. As I mentioned in a previous video I've switched over to a more strength focused build now and I'm dual wielding curved great swords. Now I'm personally a believer of play this game however you want no judgment whatsoever and honestly for the most part i think the elden ring community is actually incredibly lovely genuinely so lovely but there is that element of elitism people that say that you're not playing the game right and you just need to get good and these people tend to agree that if you use magic if you use range spells and if you do things like blocking or parrying you're a scrub so I thought, okay, I'll play the game your way. It's even easier. In the three minutes that I've been going on at the start of this video, I have taken out a giant worm face and an ulcerated tree spirit whilst taking like no damage. So don't listen to the elitists, play the game however you want. With enough practice, any build is viable, every build is fun, and no build isn't playing the game properly. With that being said, this is the first time I've tried strength at all in Elden Ring, and I'm loving it. These weapons are so fucking awesome. Just obliterated these bosses, took practically no damage. They went down instantly. And holy crap, when you're not using like spells and ranged weapons, etc., big, beefy melee weapons like this stagger enemies so quickly. So, yeah, I'm probably going to continue using these for the foreseeable because they're very fun. All right, with that little rant out of the way, let me just show you exactly where I am, by the way. So we started off at the Road of Iniquity Grey site that we ended the previous video at, and we've just come north and then east to take out these two bosses. And as we head further east onto this bridge here to take out the marionettes and grab the loot, I just want to really quickly say I really hope I didn't offend anyone or rub anyone the wrong way then. Genuinely, the only point I'm trying to portray is that this game is fantastic, the community is fantastic, and if anyone is being elitist or upsetting you, just ignore them. There's no need to worry, don't let it affect your enjoyment of the game at all. So now that we've cleared up around the minor Erd tree here, we'll go back to the Road of Iniquity and head northwest to get the bit of loot around here. We cleared most of this area in the last video, so the only thing we need to do is just keep heading north back up this cliff and eventually you'll come to the scarab that I gave up trying to kill last time. A great place to kill him is on this rock because he hangs around here for a few seconds. So I'm going to put my lava pool down and then once he runs over it, I'll get the ash of war through and through. And now we'll start heading southeast and you'll see Volcano Manor directly in front of you. Looping around the other side of the big rock here, you can kill some marionettes and grab a golden rune seven. Then we can carry on right to the front of the manor take out the marionettes and the giant worm-faced ogre troll giant thing. Once they're all dead, head up the stairs and inside, and you can discover the site of grace for Volcano Manor. Now, I'm going to do nothing here at the moment, speak to no enemies, progress nothing in Volcano Manor. Just wanted to unlock the shortcut so it's nice and easy to come back to in the next video. So for now, we'll head back out again and then progress on to the next tip. For this next tip, we're going to explore our first cave of the video. So you get yourself to the Erd Tree Gazing Hill site of grace, and then head north to the Wyndham Ruins, which we briefly explored in a previous video when we took out the Tibia Marina. Head to the very northwest of these ruins and you'll see the Wyndham Catacombs. And now that we're here, let's go through the cave together. As usual, there's a bunch of bloody imps, so take them out by any means necessary. And then a little bit further into the cave, you'll come to this slightly flooded room with a load of putrid corpses and a royal knight at the end of the room. To make this quite easy for yourself, you can aggro him and then run him back into this lightning trap here and just keep zapping the lightning trap on his ass. Once you've cleared out the room, head up the ladder, avoid the trap that just fucked me in the back, take out the imp, and you'll see there's a stone sword key statue just in front of you, and that'll lead you into this little side room here where you can pick up the lightning scorpion charm. Now we're at another Now we're at another one of them moving floor rooms that we haven't seen for a while. What I'd advise doing is stepping on the floor but staying right by the entrance you've just come out of. Let it start moving up, do a 180 and there's an imp behind you. Take him out and then you can jump back on the floor and beeline it to the other end of the room. Take out the imp and the knight over there and now you can pull the lever to open the boss room for this dungeon. 
Now you can head back over to the other side, trigger the floor to lift up, and then hop underneath it. In here, you can deal with a load of putrid corpses, and also at the end of the room, that epic item you see on the floor is an Ancient Dragon Apostles Cookbook 1. So go and loot that, but be very careful when you do, because two crabs will spawn. I definitely... Definitely didn't just die to them. You didn't see that. So we're going to gloss over the fact that just happened. And then once we teleport by our own means back to the site of grace, you can now just run straight forward into the boss room, which is another Erd Tree Burial Watchdog. Mess him up. And when he's dead, you'll get 12,000 runes and Glovewort Picker's Bell Bearing 1. Now, we're done here, but I'm going to go back to the crabs for a completely unrelated reason. And I'll meet you back here in the next tip. We're going to head on over to the old Altus Tunnel Cave, which I've just marked on the map here now. But before that, there's one item in these ruins that I very nearly forgot to show you. So we're going to drop down into this portion of the ruins. You'll see another stone sword statue that you can unlock. And in here, once you've beaten up all the big bad skillymans you'll get the Pearl Drake Talisman plus one, which is awesome because it's like a jack of all trades of all the other talismans combined. It just gives you a boost to all non-physical damage negation. So now that that's done, we'll teleport back to the Erd Tree Gazing Hill site of Grace again and run through this ravine to the north, killing or ignoring all the trolls as you go past. And eventually, right at the end, blocked by another stone sword statue, is the old Altus Tunnel. So we'll head down, like the site of Grace, and continue on forwards. This is another smithing material rich dungeon. This is another very smithing stone heavy. This is another very smithing material. Fuck, what am I trying to say? So make sure you're grabbing all the loot as you go. As always, it's absolutely full of the crystal miners. So magic attacks or blunt attacks, known as strike attacks in this game are going to be super effective. There's only a couple of bits I'll call out specifically. In the little shack within this part of the dungeon, just after you clear out the dogs and the miners, you'll get the Bolt Drake Talisman plus one. And then in this large room below, a bunch of Royal Knights will ambush you, so be very, very careful. Then once you've cleared out the area, you can grab the Troll's Hammer. After a few more enemies and a few more smithing stones, you'll be on to the boss fight, which is a stone digger troll. Smash his face in and you'll get his great club as a reward. We're done in this tunnel, so we'll move on to the next one. This next tip is really, really quick. Just go to the abandoned coffin site of Grace here, and in this caravan graveyard, there'll be a bunch of ogres, and the only two things of note to call out, nestled snugly between these caravans here, with the ogre on top, you can get a smithing stone five, and then further north, you'll get the ruler's mask and the ruler's robe. That's everything here, so go back to the abandoned coffin, and I'll take you on to the next area. Once you're back here, head northwest and we'll start running towards the Perfumer's Ruins. About halfway along your journey, you'll come to a Scarab. Take him out and you've got the Ash of War Sacred Order. Then as you get to the ruins, there's a ton of stuff you can loot here. So there's an Omen Killer enemy that you can take out and he will give you the Omen Killer's set. Bar the mask, the mask you pick up later in the game. And that's actually from an Omen Killer enemy in Lanedale, the Royal Capital. So if you want to know where to get the mask, go and watch that one as well. You can also grab a total of two perfume bottles here and I'll show you the locations of them as we're going through and clearing out the enemies. Killing this perfumer always awards me with the perfumer sarong, their armor. I don't know if that's a 100% drop rate or if I just got really coincidentally lucky, but you may or may not get part of their armor set by clearing out the perfumers in this region. And then in the chest here that the omen killer was just in front of, you've got the perfumers cookbook one. And when you come up to the giant orange Miranda flower here, once you've taken that out, you can break the wooden planks it was in front of and get the nascent butterfly. And you can also grab the other perfume bottle I was talking about. But before you leave, there's actually a breakable floor here. So smash through these wooden planks, come down into the room below, come down into the room below and you'll get the perfumer's talisman, which raises the potency of perfume items. Not going to lie to you, I have never used a perfume item in this game. If you have, let us all know which ones are good, are they, are they worth using or not. So now, we'll move on to the next tip and into the next cave. From the perfumer's ruins, just go a tiny smidge to the southwest and you'll see the entrance to this cave in no time at all. So let's head through the doors together and we'll be in the unsightly catacombs. 
This one is super straightforward. Just take out the Misbegottens and follow the only path that you can for now. A little ways into the dungeon, you'll see some Grave Glove Wart at the end of this room, but be careful because you will be ambushed by a couple of Misbegottens as you go to loot it. Once they're dealt with, come down the stairs here, and then right at the bottom, you'll see another Grave Glove Wart in the center of the room here. It looked really suspicious. I thought the floor was gonna break when I walked on top of it, so I was very gingerly walking around the edge, but it's fine, you can go and grab it. And now you will already find yourself at the boss room, so we'll backtrack slightly to actually go and unlock it. As you're walking back, this may or may not happen to you, but I was ambushed by an ogre, so I took him out. And then when you get to these stairs that we just walked down, you actually want to hop off here and make sure you're using lock on because a few of these misbegottens are just playing dead and it will identify for you which ones are alive and which ones are dead so that you can take them all out. Then you can loot the winged misbegotten ashes. And now head on up and you can pull the lever. Around the edge of the floor that this lever is on, you can also get yourself a rune arc and the prattling pate apologies. Now you can hop back down where the ogre just ambushed us and head into the boss room. You'll face Perfumer, Trisha, and a Misbegotten Warrior. I pretty much one-shot her, and the Misbegotten Warrior was taken down not too soon after she was, and then you'll be rewarded with her as a summon. So now that we've cleared out that cave, we'll move on to yet another cave. Now you want to head back to the Wyndham Catacombs, head outside, and then drop down the ledges here to the southwest. You can grab a Sight of Grace, and then keep running north up the ravine. You'll get the Ash of War Barrage from this Scarab, you can grab a golden seed a bit further up the ravine, along with a bunch of other loot, including a smithing stone five and loads of volcanic stones. Now up here is a few items to loot, along with a load of bastard basilisks. Be careful not to die to the death blight as you take them out, and then turn around and just a little bit back on yourself, up this ledge, you'll find another stone sword gargoyle, which will open the way to Seethwater Cave. If you have any way to consistently cleanse yourself of poison, such as the flame cleanse me incantation, this cave will be much easier because most of it is completely covered in poison. There's a bunch of side paths, but none of it is particularly missable and none of it is interesting at all. So I'll just leave you to go through most of the cave at your leisure. The one bit I will call out is just as you drop down this poison waterfall, head into the southwest cave, keep following the path round. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dealing with the rats and the poison casters as you go, you can loot a golden rune 7 here, then further down into this poison pool, you'll see a load of casters along with a giant Miranda Bloom, and in here you can grab the Mushroom Armor Set, which is incredibly good for poison resistance. Now continue on through the cave until you get to the giant hole in the floor here. Carefully drop down the ledges. You can clear out the rats halfway down and get the poison bone darts. Then at the bottom, you'll come to the boss room, which is two kindreds of rot. And then once you have absolutely destroyed their faces in with two massive swords and practically two shot them both, you'll be rewarded with the Kindred of Rot's Exaltation, which, if memory serves, allows you to do bonus damage when near poison or scarlet rot which is a very unique mechanic and one that can come in very handy in certain areas of the game. We're done in this cave, so I'll meet you back outside. Once you're back outside, head west through the ravine. I'll gloss over this run because there's no loot worth mentioning, but when you get to the end and you're out of the ravine again, you can grab the Seethe Water Terminus Site of Grace, and assuming this fort is pronounced the same as Blythe, you'll currently be looking at Fort Lythe, and we'll be covering this fort, along with a few villages and shacks to the south of Volcano Manor, in a few videos' time. We'll cover Volcano Manor itself first, then we'll come back and mop up the surrounding area. So now you've unlocked this site of grace, we can move on to the last tip for this video. The final tip is yet another cave. This area is just riddled with caves. So join me back at the abandoned coffin grace site. And we're now just going to head north and slightly east through this lake. And in no time at all, you'll come to the sage's cave. This cave is just full of skeletons that are going to try and ambush you from every angle, along with being full of chests and hidden walls. So pretty much straight away, you'll see the cave goes nowhere. Smack the wall in front of you. It was an illusion. Let's go through. Pretty much immediately ambushed by a spearman, by a spear wheel, by a spear wielding skelly boy. Kill him dead, and then just to the right is another hidden wall. You can loot the two chests here, and then carry on a little bit further. There's another wall to destroy on your left here. A spear wielding skeleton and a bunch of bandit skeletons dual wielding their curved blades will run out at you. 
deal with them as they're coming out. Then you can head in where they were and grab a load of loot, being five silver pickled fowl feet, a black hood, a candle tree wooden shield, and a nascent butterfly. Now, further down the cave we go. There's a load of skeletons in this room. Try and kill them a little bit more effectively than I did. And then the one in the corner here that didn't charge me along with the rest of them. As I smack him to pieces, I reveal yet another illusionary wall in that chest as a stone sword key. Then we'll come further through still and grab some dragon wound grease and the raptor talons from these chests. Hop over this ledge, smash through yet another wall. You can now loot the raptor's black feathers and a skeletal mask. Smash through this wall and it'll lead you into a boss room with Necromancer Garrus. Now there are two bosses in this cave and I could have sworn this one was the Black Knife Assassin. So I summon my spirit because I really need him for that other boss fight and you'll see why in a minute. But I'm quite glad that I summoned him for this boss fight as well because this Necromancer was tougher than I remember. He nearly had me a couple of times and he's constantly summoning his own guys throughout the fight as well. So this was a tougher fight than I thought it would be. Fair play to him. GG, gave me a run for my money and once you do, manage to fuck him up you'll get the family heads weapon now run back through the cave and head the other way around this waterfall and you'll come to the other boss room here you'll face the black knife assassin that i just mentioned a second ago if anyone knows if there's any other ways to reveal this guy please let us all know in the comments but he is completely invisible and the reason i summon my spirit ashes in this fight is because for some reason the ai can track him at all times so it gives you a much better idea of where he is trying to take this guy out one-on-one -on -one, I, I have no idea i just get fucked every single time <laughs> And once you manage to take him out, you'll get the Concealing Veil. We're done in this cave, and that means we are done with this area. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. I hope you had fun. I feel like I sound like a broken record, so I'm so sorry. But please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and if you're not already subscribed. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.